Hola, reyes, high kings and queens. I pray that today I find you excited to get activated with the Holy Spirit. I'm excited today because we're about to learn about the truth. We have facts and then we have truth and we're going to learn the difference and what exactly we're talking about when we come, when you're talking about the truth of God's love. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for your word accomplishing what you sent it to accomplish and activating us in Jesus' name and whatever needs to be activated, Lord, have your way today. We thank you that we're filled with excitement if we don't find them excited in the name of jesus i pray you borrow some of mine we thank you for your father for your uncommon unearned unexplainable preferential preferential treatment of your presence your protection your peace your prosperity and more than anything lord we know that our perspective shifts in your presence may we obey and surrender our pres our our presence under yours but our vision and our perspectives we want your presence and your presence and your perspectives lord we surrender it in Jesus name if I find you today with a hole in your soul breaking your heart or a block in your mind I pray that the Lord fixes it heals it reveals it mends it in Jesus name clarifies it Lord in Jesus name I speak the name of Jesus over river revival and restoration in your life healing in your heart in your hurting and your sorrow bring the Holy Spirit fix it <laughs> circumstances are changing right now in Jesus name breakthrough is happening right now in Jesus name we thank you father for unity and peace flowing from you through us outwards to be a fountain of unity and peace fear inside inside of us are fleeing in jesus name every curse over our life is broken over our children's children's life broken in the mighty name of jesus if you receive it believe it say amen type amen that god is doing the impossible he is a forever loving yeshua a god who loves as we love our children, God loves us. In Jesus' name, have your way, Lord. Thank you for activating the fruits of your Holy Spirit that only flow through your love and through your presence and your perspectives. In Jesus' name, we're reading today from 1 John 3, 1, which reads, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are, exclamation point. We are his children. There's been many times that I pray for my children. And one thing that my grandmother told me, God rest her soul, is they are his children before they are yours. So when you're praying for their needs, you're praying on behalf of, you know, the, the Jesus comes behalf of us to request them. But he is our children. He created us. He created them. He's called us to be a good example to them, to live righteously, example God's love through them. Do not exasperate your children. That's in scripture. Do not exasperate your children. Do not frustrate them in the sense to where you are bitter or harsh with them. If you're loving them, disciplining them, there's a way to do it in love. And God does call us in the Bible to discipline our children too. Because those who do not discipline with the rod do not know love and don't know how to love your children. Because if you raise spoiled children that can never understand the word no or even hear the word no you know god tells us no god tells us wait god says you're not ready god disciplines it's really not god that disciplines it's our own actions that discipline because we disobey him there's a lot of things you hear in the news that this one thing that's brought to my mind right now is that i had heard in the news that one one young girl had um snuck out of her home disobeyed her parents just to go to the store met some men that killed her they raped her and killed her and it, it was so sad to me because i was like there's a lot of things that we disobey the lord he puts conviction to give us direction he removes peace when he's not when we're not in his presence there's not peace no more so we have a a fear we have anxiety we have stress and chaos that comes in because we're not in his presence no more he protects us by his blood he protects us by his presence but when we disobey him we put ourselves in harm's way. Many times I've said that when you don't pray over something, you're giving authority over the enemy. Yes, kings and queens, it is that serious. So I thank you for your time today. I pray that it gives you great activation. Have your way, Lord. Explain to us, activate in us, instruct us, guide us, direct us the truth about your love, Lord. See what is the see what great love the Father has lavished on us. What does that mean? Great means forth strength. Love. What does love mean? It's an intense feeling. Um, and let me give you the whole uh, the whole definition. An intense feeling of deep affection. That's how God loves us. Uh, you feel deep affection for someone you like or enjoy them very much. I've always said that you know you can love people from a distance, <laughs> and it's good to just not love them, but to like them because 
when you like people, you enjoy their presence. You want to be around them more. You can love someone from a distance where you don't want to be with them. But um, maybe that's just some of us have grown up in toxicity. Heal it, Holy Spirit. So love is uh, to be generous, extravagant. Oh, I'm sorry. That's lavish. Don't get ahead of myself. So it's for us to, God bestows lavish, la, he, he's generous with. Lavish means to be generous with um, extravagant quantities. So that means that he lavishes us with his love. It's a great quantity, depth. We learned yesterday, measurements, deep measurements, the heights of his love. When we have those great measurements, depths, heights of his love, we can go be that in the world. That's why the fruits of his Holy Spirit are there as tools, currency, and even weapons. Because someone can pay you with bitterness and evil and you're going to give them joy and peace. Why? Because it's overflowing in your life. I pray in the name of Jesus. He's telling us here that we are, we should be called children of God. We should, we should distinguish as ourselves children of God. When you have a parent that loves you, cares for you, protects you, feeds you, provides for you, nourishes you, you know, you know that they care for you. They love you. They appreciate you. They example it, how they treat you. People can say they love you, but their actions don't reflect their love. Or maybe they have a love, as I've mentioned to people before, I don't, your love, I can live without. Because if this is your love, I, I don't want this kind of love. I'm, I'm picky with my love. That's because it oh, it activates me or it deactivates in me to be to others. If someone is not loving you correctly the way you need to be loved, because we all have love languages, bring your Holy Spirit. God will direct us and guide us on how to love people. It's like today, my husband, um, he texted me something uh, yet last night and it kind of I kind of was like, mm, you know, and then like, you know, I prayed about it and I fell asleep and. This morning I texted him, you know, something. I was being completely vulnerable. I said, I love you. I'm learning about this and I'm trying. So thank you, my love, for this, this, and this. And he was like, oh, this made my day. Thank you, my love. Because there's going to be things that our children, our spouses, our parents tell us sometimes that needs to be heard. But sometimes we don't want to like accept it or it could be a prayer answered and you're like frustrated with it. And that's what God revealed to me this morning. It's like you prayed about something. He's bringing it to pass. Do you think he wants to be doing what he's doing or he's called on assignment just encourage him and love him where he is and, and be thankful for what he's doing and creating. It may not look like what you want it to look like, you know, and in me sharing that, putting my pride aside and my ego and my feelings aside, I'm going to love him because he is doing something. He is sacrificing something to bring to pass. And I need to be thankful for that. I need to see with the eyes of the Lord. I need to see with love. I would tell you that many people say like, oh, you do this. Thank you. Why you do this? And you're so thoughtful. All that is in me that is good is God. He's working on me. He's feeding me with his love. All and anything that I do that is good is God. And where he works on me, I work. And where he feeds me, I feed. Where he's generous with me, I, I'm being generous. Is it easy all the time? No, it's not always easy. So what he's telling us here is that the way you love your child, and some of us were not loved correctly. Some of us get in manipulative, toxic parenting, narcissistic, and then we become narcissistic. You know, I always say that the narcissistic things that I attracted in my life was because I was a narcissist. Yes, I was a narcissist. I had to unlearn a lot of things through God and learn to trust in him and not manipulate things because we want things to happen in our time and our way. And I had to learn that, no, I want God's way. I want God's love. I do not want the Jezebel spirit of manipulating, controlling, and trying to maneuver things to work out for me because they end disastrously. They end chaotically. Bring in Holy Spirit. So we are children of God. Maybe we didn't have parents that showed us you know, the correct loving way. So we can't, we see God distorted because our perspective, when it's not aligned with God's perspective, we're going to see things the way we experience them. And I learned that just because I had this, when I was growing up, it doesn't mean that that's who God is or God was in my life. So I pray that that blesses you. Um, the meaning of John 3, 1, I'm going to repeat it again because when we hear things three times, we're more likely to remember them. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. So the fact and the truth. Let me give you real quick what the difference between the truth is, the truth definition and fact. Okay. So truth is the quality of state of being true. 
that which is true or accordance with fact or reality. A fact or belief that is accepted as truth. Get it? So it is, uh, it's basically an accordance of what is happening. The, the, it's what, it's like the quality of state of being true. But let's find out what fact is, because I want, give us some insight, Holy Spirit, bring it. A, the, a thing that is known or proved to be true. So information was evident as a part of a report, news article, the truth about events opposed to interpretation. So to me, fact is the present state, the present moment. Maybe right now your bank account looks broke. Maybe right now you look like the divorce is about to happen. Maybe you look like the marriage ain't going to be saved. Maybe you look like the illness ain't going to get better. Maybe right now you're praying for rain and you see the sun. Maybe you launch that business and you don't see the clients come. If you build it, they will come. If God has called you to launch a business, he will bring the clientele. If he's called you to write a book, he will bring the people that are to read the book. If he's asked you to make daily devotionals like me, he will bring the audience. He will bring the community. He will bring the kingdom. He will bring, when I speak, there is people that hear my voice and they're like, wait a minute, that's doing something for me. It's the same way with me. Y'all comment, y'all pray, y'all put blessings, y'all bless me tremendously. And I'm going to tell you, when y'all do that, I'm just like, wow, how is it that these people could love like that? How is it that they could speak in such a way or pray for me or know me or how? And, and it's the Holy Spirit. If I nourish you through the Holy Spirit, I speak what you need through the Holy Spirit. I, it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. It's time praying, reading, studying, researching. Time that I spend with him activates the Holy Spirit and others that are called to my community. And y'all are called to my community because y'all encourage me. Y'all educate me. Y'all bless me. The birthday blessings and, and, and prayers and God bless y'all. Y'all have no idea. Like, I'm like, oh, Lord, thank you. I'm always trying to feed and be generous with my time and speak the word of God. Whatever God is putting in my life to learn, I want to share it. I'm eager to share what I've learned with y'all. And I've learned that there's something, there's an intense feeling of passion and love for each and every one of you that is under the sound of my voice. I haven't even gotten into the devotion today, but bring in Holy Spirit. So a fact is a present state. The truth is that God is not done yet. His love is going to conquer all. Today's quote is, "'Tis better to love than to not love at all." How will you know what love, being in love is if you've never experienced it? Heartbreak is an indication of love. If you're in heartbreak right now, it's because you loved and something happened that broke your heart. It's like you give people your heart and what they do with it reveals, okay. <laughs> and people that you love can break your heart accidentally. Sometimes it's intentionally. But it's okay because God is saying that there's a break in your heart. Let me mend it and let me give you some wisdom and insight of how not to end up there again. How you can make decisions to get you not there. People are going to break your heart sometimes. That, that's just going to happen. The Lord will never break your heart. He will always mend it if you surrender and subdue it to him and he will multiply it. Meaning you're going to overflow with love. The enemy is going to use the bitterness, the trauma, the heartbreak. He wants to use it to break you and to make you something that God can't use. But I rebuke and bind that because God can use anyone and anything. He created all. So everything bows to him in Jesus name. Let me get into today's uh, thing. So we got the truth and the fact. Truth is what is, let me, let me go back. Let me go back. Bring the Holy Spirit. The fact is something that is known or proven to be true. <clears throat> Where is it, Holy Spirit? And love is an intense feeling. Truth is the quality or state of being true, which is true in accordance with the fact or reality. Okay, so the truth, a fact or belief that is accepted as true. A lot of people are not believing things that are not true. Let me get into today's word. Bring the Holy Spirit, the truth about God's love. From 1 John 3, 1. The author writes, For more than a decade, I immerse myself daily in God's word. And I memorize countless verses about God's love for me. It's important for us to memorize these. That's why I read them over and over. And it's so crazy because when I'm reading things, I hear the Lord like, Grumbling and complaining. That's the scripture. Don't do things grumbling and complaining because God sees your heart. And he sees what's coming out of your mouth. Because he can take things the way he blessed things and lavishes us with his blessings. He can also remove them if you're not thankful for them and you're not handling them properly. Because God did not die on the cross for us to be mistreating people and treating them with dislike or anger or bitterness or just being mean to people. That's not cool. 
I desperately needed his love. Amen. Bring in Holy Spirit. And when I read about how much he loved me and that he had a plan, a purpose, and a place in his family for me, I soaked it up. Bring in Holy Spirit. That truth was water for a parched soul. It helped me reconstruct my broken heart. I meditated upon God's words of love and pondered them and prayed them. Let's pray them. Let's request them. I found life in them. Ooh, bring it. We be activated, Lord. Bring it, Holy Spirit. And when storms came, those promises about God's unconditional love held me. I'm going to tell you, I've learned now when people say things or do things, I'm like, mm. people be telling me what they're going through. And I'm like, but God. God is using trouble. I even put this little board in my house that says trouble transports us. I need people that walk in here to know that if you're walking through trouble, trials, and tribulations, those things are going to transport you where God wants you. Let it happen. Be joyous when you're uh, offended or persecuted. Because God was, you're just a vessel being used and there's going to be trouble in your life. But God. This is why I've learned now that when you, ex when I experience this truth, when you believe God is who he says he is, when you choose in faith to hang on to him and his word, his truth sets you free. So if there's something happening in your life, you're going to realize like, I am the head, not the tail. My better days are ahead of me than in the past. So many, there's been some great things that are happening in the past. Ooh, look forward to the front. Look forward to the ones that are coming. I'm telling you, every birthday that I have, it's getting better and better. Sometimes my table's full of people. Sometimes it's not. But I'm like, Lord, thank you for this time where there's no one at my table. That means I got more of your spirit. But there's a lot of times when there's love flowing through the table and joy. And it's like, oh, Lord, all these people are eating at my table. Bless me, Father, so I can be a blessing to these people at this table. Because now people's presence and experiencing people to me is the greatest gift that I could ever receive. And I want to be a blessing. I want people to feel better, look better, be encouraged better, learn better when they're in my presence. Because I know that I can only be a holy presence, a joyous presence, a patient presence, a kind presence, a self-control presence, a responsible presence, only in his presence. Because his what is it? His prosperity flows through his presence. So I want to be submerged in all of his goodness. So therefore I can be filled with the godness, the godliness to be good to others. Woo! Bring Holy Spirit. The truth you store up in silence comes back to you during the storm like a life raft. I want to be a life raft for others. I want to help save others because I'm saved. I want to help heal others because I'm healed. I want to help be joyous to others because he brings joy to my life. It lifts you away from the fears and the disappointments that would otherwise pull you under. I was talking to someone the other day and they were telling me all the troubles that were going on in their life. And I was like, ooh, ooh you're that much closer to breakthrough. When, you, when it gets rougher, tougher, you're that much more closer to the Lord opening the gates of heaven the flood waters the rain the giant falling as we learned yesterday that when 41 comes the 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 rain comes there is joy on the 41 day 41 year 41 hour only god knows so if these things are there to pull you under that means that the enemy is trying to destroy or trying to get you to believe his lies because you got breakthrough coming, circumstances are changing, you got that healing in the hurting and the sorrow. Today, soak up his word. When you abide or stay faithfully in his word, his word accomplishing what he sent it to accomplish, he abides in you, providing peace and reassurance of his love for you. So I'm going to tell you because I had some parents that were... um. A little, a little different, a little unique. I had to learn and unlearn things that I wanted to do different for my children. And I had to read God's word to teach me to be a better parent than what I had. And I love my parents. I'm thankful for them. But I wanted to be better than them. I wanted to be better than I was yesterday. And the only way I could do that was to take God's direction. And one thing is that if when we act in love, we're acting with God. And I'm knowing now that when I see sunsets and they make me cry and I see a rainy day and sometimes I cry, it's because there's things in my heart that I just like, I'm excited that there's rain because it reminds me of God's works. When I see the ocean, when I see a sunny day, I'm like, oh Lord, I want to go outside. When the fall, when falls, the transition here in San Antonio, how many of us can be more appreciative of some windy weather? Bring it, Holy Spirit, bring that fall weather and make it last a long time because we don't get it often here. 
And I go outside, I'm like, oh, Lord, you're so good. Like, I was just yesterday in the tub, and I was thinking, Lord, my birthday was the most beautiful. The weather was beautiful. We were outside with, I don't even think we had fans. It was windy. I appreciated the exclusive exclusivity. I have it at the same place. Usually, I they try to plan it other places, but then it just doesn't work out because there's this one place that I love. Um... It's here in San Antonio. It's just the best for me. I, the environment is there. I When I'm there, I feel home. So I'm going to tell you, when you f go around people and you feel home, because that's God's love. They love you correctly. They love you the way God created you to be loved. That's why I would say you want God's pick, God's partner, God's relationships. Because he's showing people when they're obedient and how to love you, that means they're listening to the creator because he created you. My husband loves me in such a way that I'm like, how you know? How you read my mind? How you know my traumas and trials that I've been through? How do you know my triggers? And 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 he's soft around my triggers. He knows things. Like we went to counseling. There were so many things that we learned. And counseling, man, it is so healthy. People say like, oh, you go to counselor, you're weird. No, counselors can give you some insight from the outside perspective. Bring the Holy Spirit. There is Christian counselors. Find them and you will see. Uh, so today's quotes are love looks love looks okay love conquers all things so we shall yield to love and where we shall yield to love and be loved is the most natural expression of our being love looks with the mind so it's not what we see it's the mind it's what's activated in us what opens our hearts is how you love people. You see, sometimes people together and they're like opposites. What? They're completely different. How'd they end up together? Love. It looks with the mind. Love looks with the mind. So therefore, when you have the Holy Presence, you're going to look with wisdom. I would tell you that when I, I remember I would just love on people and I was like, oh, well, they're a good person. They go to church when I was dating. And God was like, just because they go to church, it doesn't mean that they're getting healing from the church. They can just be sitting there. It doesn't mean that it's doing anything to their spirit. And I was like, ooh. So I would tell you another quote is, the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but those who watch them without doing anything. Mm -hmm. Albert Einstein. I'm going to tell you, you see things going on that are doing evil things. You can love and it will conquer all. God has told me how to love my enemies he has told me how to pray for those who persecute me he has prayed like told me that those that want to do things to you love them and pray for them and i have learned that he will make your enemies be at peace with you when you are love that is one of his greatest powers is love and relationships relationships are true wealth how people love you how people feel around you how you make people feel people remember what you say but they remember how you make them feel good or bad let that be some wisdom. Today's prayer is, Lord, fill me with the knowledge of your love. Fill us, fill you, fill me and you, and help that knowledge. Help that knowledge. Grow that knowledge, Holy Spirit. Travel from my head to my heart. Take out that ego, etching God out. Remove it, Holy Spirit. Make it grow there. Grow it, Lord. Root it. So I, you, us, remember your goodness when storms come. When people mistreat us, we want to remember your goodness. When people offend us, when people cause division in our lives, we want to remember your goodness because it will remind us and activate in us we are good. We are his child. Whoever's sent to try to, whoever is in your life and they're trying to create challenges and storms and trying to make your life harder, you reap what you sow. You want to make my life harder? Go ahead. I'm still love on you. Because my father created me to love. Is it easy? No. <laughs> but the more you do it, that muscle, the more you do it, you'll grow your muscle of love. And when things are done to you, you're not even, it's not even going to phase you anymore. You're just like, mm -hmm. you will start seeing Jesus everywhere. And if you don't know what to pray for, you can pray for Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it'll, he'll give you the divine instruction. So thank you for your time today, kings and queens. I thank you. This is a divine time with the Lord. So I thank you for your time today. I pray that it's activated in you, advanced you, grew you, that it's activated in you. So share with those who God calls you to share with. If you do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you can repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for your works in my life. Thank you for your love in my life. Thank you for the good in me that we know that it is you. 
And how we love our children is, is, I pray that we can go out into the world and love other people's children and care for them, protect them, nurture them. In Jesus' name, you pray that simple prayer, put God first. As it says here, and find a Bible-based church. Holy, if you need a Holy Bible or daily devotion, reach out to me, I'll get you on God's speed. As this says, the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch. When we see children that are alone, let's care for them. When we see children that are lost, let's care for them. We see people on our social media, children of other people's, and, and you see things that they're not doing that could harm them. Let's tell their parents. Let's send messages. Let's be an active community that reigns responsibly in protecting, cultivating, nourishing, being a good example, discerning, revealing, clarifying things, being the fruits of the Holy Spirit, being patient with people, taking care of all children as we would our own, because that's what God calls us to. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we're family. Let's be love and unity and peace in Jesus' name. Those who just watch evil be done, you see people doing things that you know that are illegal or wrong in God's eyes, do something about it. The Lord will instruct you what to do and he will protect you. So in Jesus' name, I thank you for your time today. Remember, if God prompts someone in your heart, please be obedient and sharing. Let's be good in the world. Let's be the God in the world in the sense of where he calls us to do good. What would Jesus do? So if God prompts someone right now to share in the in the spirit, please be obedient and sharing. God bless you, kings and queens. Those who refresh others will to be refreshed. Those who love others will to be loved. And remember the why, the who, the what, the when. In his love, how does he love? He protects. He provides. He's a peace. Why does he provide? Because we are his children. When does he provide? At the perfect time. Who does he provide for us? Why? Because we are his children. Because he died on the cross for us. He didn't die on the cross for you to be causing evil to others or letting people do evil to others. Stand up for the righteous. You are righteous. Live righteously in Jesus' name. Putting your, your crown on is standing for the righteous. Helping, providing, cultivating. As the police cop cars say, to serve and protect. That's what we are here for. To serve and protect. So I pray that, that blesses you. And I pray that you feed the Holy Spirit in you. Work on the Holy Spirit in you. And those who are loved are called to love others. Those who are healed are called to heal others. When there's people out there hurting others, it's because they're hurting. Pray for them. Be an example of love in their life. Maybe they've never experienced it. Maybe they've never known it. Maybe you're going to be the only act of God to do good to them and by them. So God bless you, kings or queens. Thank you for your time invested today. I pray that this prayer blesses your life. And if you don't have a, a relationship with the Holy Spirit, repeat after that prayer I did. Put God first. And remember, I pray in the name of Jesus that God gave you great revelation, clarification, spiritual discernment in your whole and your soul, breaking your heart and the block in your mind. God is in the midst of that all. He is the, the whatever's blocked in your mind. He like, he's there. That break in your heart, he's there. And that hole in your soul, only he can fulfill it and feel it. Fill it. So thank you in Jesus' name for your time today. I pray that it's blessed you, advanced you. If it has, be a blessing and share with others. God bless you, kings and queens. I'll see you all tomorrow. And remember, the truth is that he loves you. He protects you. In his presence lies great peace, protection, prosperity in his presence. Be partnership with him so he can send you your partners. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.